Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. We've got another little mini episode here, a shorts, about this Ricotron, or Ricotron Vintage C128 power supply replacement. It works well, the output is fine, but it has the most annoying buzz. Let me see if I can get the lapel mic close so you can hear it. Hopefully that comes out on the microphone. So I imagine that sound is originating from the transformer inside for the 9 volts AC. But I was kind of hoping we could take it apart and maybe add some padding or something to the case so it didn't resonate so much. It's quite annoying. Let's see what we can find out. Here are just a few of the circuit boards I've had made recently by PCBWay, who is nice enough to sponsor this video. So whether you need a few boards or a lot of boards, check out PCBWay. So head on over to PCBWay and get your instant quote on standard circuit boards, flex circuit boards, assembly, and they now also offer rapid prototyping so you can get your mechanical parts made as well. That's an awesome service. So for your next project, head on over to PCB Way. Got her unplugged. And if we flip it over here, it looks like there's just four Phillips screws holding the works together. I don't feel anything under this label. This is a Ricoton. DSP 128 5 volts 4.3 amps 9 volt at 1 amp okay. I can hear that rattling it's a metal shield on the C128 that we've been using this power supply to work on okay oh yeah alright so, what do we have here? Power supply is kind of bolted to this little flimsy circuit board. So, in this type of DC to DC converter, the voltage is first stepped down through a big transformer. And then it's switched to produce the regulated voltage. So, it's still relatively heavy. And most modern... Uh, DC to DC converters, the incoming power is first rectified and then it's switched at a much higher frequency so you have a smaller transformer, etc. So I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do about how noisy this guy is. Oh, looky here. We've got a busted off screw. Wow, those look really chewed up on this side. Goodness gracious. These, the way these mains connections are soldered on there is rather janky looking. I think this is quality with a K. Oh yeah, these are pretty loose too. That might be the source of her vibration issue. Well, I think we're going to have to try to take these three out to extract this one and find a couple replacements for this side. Okay, I'm going to try to get a little more working area here. So, take off that one wire from the cover like so. I've got these little needle nose vice grips here. Not quite sure they're going to do the task, but it's worth giving it a shot. Hey, that actually got it. What do you know? Oh, 
think one very mangled screw. And there we go. Okay. Yeah, see this this side was all floppy loosey and this side was tight, so no doubt some of that vibration was coming from here. Let's see if we can get this screw out. Oh, yeah. See, they were thinking about isolation. That's why they had these little plastic doodads in here. Get you a closer view of that. These little white plastic deals here. The vibration dampener. And these are little T-shaped pieces that sit in the hole, and they keep the screw isolated from the transformer. Okay, so now we have this bracket, and we've got the screw broken off in it. It's really in a position that we can't get enough bite on it. And I imagine it's in there cross-threaded. So I think what I'll do is take this out to the garage, and I'll... Center tap. Well, that went much better than expected. I locked this in the vise upside down like this and center tapped the bottom of the screw, which was still flat. I drilled it out as much as I could and then took an old screwdriver and hammer and tapped it in toward the center, which kind of broke it loose. And then I was able to get it out and I chased the threads on both sides. It's an M3 screw. And I dug through my little bin of metric screws. And these are the original two screws. These are my replacements, and they look exactly identical. How lucky is that? So now, we will pop this guy back on the transformer. Put this long screw through there. And then we'll get it connected back to the circuit board and see how much difference that made. Let's see, we gotta put our bushings in here, like so. Try to make sure these stay nice and tight. Maybe this will last another 40 years. All right, excellent. So now, we need to solder that wire back in there. Put my pinky end of there to hold the wire in place, and now we'll get a little more solder on here. And heat up that joint more. It's a big, thick trace, so we want to apply enough heat. Well, I noticed that when I squeezed this loose lamination on this outside edge, it got a lot quieter. So I spread open this last lamination that was loose, dribbled some regular super glue in there, pried it in and out to try to work it down in there, and then clamped it. And there was still a loose section right here, which really couldn't separate anymore. So I took this really thin super glue. This is 3M Scotch Weld SF20. And it is a really low viscosity. It's designed to seep into cracks to uh, mend them that you can't get open. So I've had that, did that, I've had that clamp on there an hour or so. And I added another bolt at the top here to squeeze the laminations together. Now I'm going to take this back out of the case and do the other side as well. If that looks like it's loose. Hopefully that'll clamp the laminations well enough that they won't vibrate anymore. Now this side actually looks fine. So we'll just add the screw and then we'll try to see if there's any other loose laminations on there that we can fix up. So hopefully with the laminations tightened up It'll get rid of a lot of that noise. Well, 
Well, we've got it back together and it's actually running now and it is a lot quieter from this distance away. You know, I'm, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred millimeters away. Um, I, I don't hear it unless I really, really strain. If I, you know, get my ear down to it, I can hear it. But, you know, I don't usually use my Commodore 128 with my ear pressed to the power supply. I'll get the microphone kind of in the same place as I did before. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear that difference on the video, but it is a lot better. I think gluing the loose laminations and putting the extra screws there to keep the transformer laminations from vibrating was what did the trick. And of course, solidifying them out to the PCB was also a very good thing to do. So I hope you enjoy these short format videos. Let me know what you think. Thanks to everyone who helped support the Hey Burt channel. You really do keep this channel going. And if you have any questions or comments, well, just leave them down below. I sure would appreciate it. And until next time, bye.